it out because I don't have a copy of it. So, I want to work any of these. Which one? The first one. So what does it look like? Is it a full wave, half wave, center tap? Huh? Full wave center tap? So we have a primary, it goes back over here, then we have a secondary, center tap uh, secondary. And we'll set this as our common. Is it a positive or negative supply? Does the anodes point toward the transformer or do they point away from the transformer? Okay, so this is like this. Yes? Huh? Okay. So the anode is this side right here, right? So they point toward the transformer, so this is a positive supply. Very easy to see, right? All we do is look and see what, uh, what's pointing toward the source. Uh, then we come over here and we connect these two together. And what type of load are we using? Two point two K. And what are we putting on the primary over here? One hundred twenty volts. And what's the ratio of the transformer? So for every ten turns over here, we have one over there. So that means we're going to get one tenth out that we put in, right? Everybody okay? So voltage on the secondary should equal to 120 divided by 10, which gives us what? 12 volts. RMS, right? You can do this several ways. We can go ahead and divide this by 2, but let's do it this way. So uh, voltage peak on the secondary is equal to 12 divided by 0 0.707. What does that give us? Point one. Okay. And then I'm going to divide that by 2. And why am I going to divide that by 2? And why do we divide it by two? Nobody in the class knows why we divide it by two. Besides, it's the formula to get it. <laughs> why do we divide it by two? Why do we divide it by two? Why do we divide it by two? Because we're only using one half of the transformer at any one time. It's both there, both there. And that's what we that's why we have to divide it by two. We're not using the whole transformer, we're using only half of it, right? You understand? Okay. So y'all could have went ahead and divided this by two, you'd have came up with the same thing. You got your worksheet. Okay, now we can figure V peak out. So V peak out. How do we calculate V peak out? By the way, here you don't have to use this. You could use what? Eight point five. So what's VP out? Yeah. 
DP gal. Okay, we've already, we, not quite, we did this right here, right? Okay, so we came up with this, so we've already done that, right? Okay, so we're taking VP out with the what now? Minus 0.7, the voltage drop across the diode, right? Okay, what do we come up and get? Are we okay so far? Okay, so now we need to calculate DC. So what's our votes DC? Or just, yeah, let's do it. Let's do the equation. So this would be what? 7.8 divided by 3.14, right? And what would that equal? Oh, times two. I'm not quite yet through yet, guys. Are we okay? Okay, so now we can calculate I of the load. I is equal to V across the load divided by the load size. What's I of the load? What's that? Around 2 milliamps. Are we okay so far? Yes or no? Uh, we could ca we could calculate the power of the load. Uh, so power of the load would be equal to V, which is 4.9 times 2 milli. So how much power do we get in the load? So power in the primary, what would the primary power be? What would the primary power be? What would the primary power be? Your power is not in volts. What would the primary, what would the primary, what would the primary power be? What would the primary power be? What would, 9.8 milliwatts. The transformer does not change watts. The, change, the transformer changes voltage and current. We don't, transformers do not create power. Transformers tra transfer power, right? You understand. And the way I explained it, if all your transformers were 100% efficient, if you turn on a 100 watt light bulb at your house, your power company would give you 100 watts. Transformers do not create power. I told you about the guy from uh, Birmingham, right, that applied for the job and said that transformers check uh, uh, step power up and uh, step power down, and I told you he lost the job for that one missed question, right? You understand? Very important concept. Transformers do not change power. Power in equals power out if the transformers were 100% efficient. We don't really, we're not really concerned with transformer efficiency, Alabama power and TVAR because they go through a lot of transformers. So we're going to assume that the transformers are basically 100% efficient. Odds are the primary is going to give me 10 milliwatts to get 9.8 milliwatts out because there's no such thing as 100% efficient, right? Work in and work out will never be equal to each other. Work out will always be less. Because nothing's 100% efficient, right? You understand? So primary, so what would the primary current be? I the primary. Let's see if we can yeah, so it'd be 
9.8 million divided by 120. I is equal to P, uh, P over B. So this is what current would be flowing in the primary. Transformers do not change power. They change voltage. The higher the voltage, the lower the current because it's transferring power, right? You understand? So what would the I of the prim primary be? Yeah, into microwatts. Microamps, I'm sorry. And this is why Alabama Power steps the voltage up so high because the current goes down, right? Why do they want the current to go down? Or, right, exactly right. Because every wire has resistance, right? And they have less voltage drop. So you can use a smaller gauge wire or they can go to aluminum instead of copper. Go ahead, Brian. I was trying to see. Now, the reason why, why do we divide the milliwatt by primary voltage? We're looking at this uh, formula right here. This should be in there, but this is what's law. Uh, so P is equal to V over I. So I would equal to P over V. So what we did is we took, and this is what I really, really I wanted to see. This is a, this is the major advantage of AC. What is the major advantage of AC? What is the major advantage of AC over DC? That that's what it does. But what is the major advantage? Huh? We can't store AC. What is the major advantage of AC? We can step the voltage up for transmission. So now we have very little line loss, right? You understand, right? You understand that. And then we can step it down. Why don't we step it down? Yeah, safety. We step it down for safety, right? You don't understand that. So the primary advantage of AC is we can step it up for transmission. And that way I don't have to have a power plant every mile. I can put, I told you where we get our power at here, right? Where do we, where does our power come from here? TDA, Tennessee Valley. We, TDA has no power plants down here. All their power, all their power plants is up in the Tennessee Valley, right? Up around the Tennessee River. Now how in the world can they get that power down here to run the entire city of Bessemer? Getting it through wires. They step it what? Ooh. They step it way up for transmission, and then they start stepping it down to. And of course, what's the two voltage levels at our house? What runs on your 240? All your high wattage devices, not your refrigerator. Refrigerator is not considered high wattage, right? Understand? If you got a big HVA system, it runs on there. If you got electric heaters, it runs on there. Your dryer, since right. it runs on your 240, right? So all your high wattage devices run on 240. Why? Because the electricians can use a smaller gauge wire to run that. Right? Y'all understand. Instead of using a six gauge wire to run your dryer, which they couldn't even put through a two by four, right? You understand. They can use a 12 gauge wire to run your dryer. Right? That makes sense. But they run it at 240. So I'll say, what's the advantage of high voltage over low voltage? People say, well, it's more efficient. It can deliver more power. Power is power, right? So it delivers that power at a watt at a lower current. So the advantage of AC. And you can see it here. So here we're doing what? Two milliamps. So we're on our primary, we do a watt. Or even two microns. Pretty cool. I think I'm going to put that question on the there. About what's the, ma what's the major advantage of DC over AC? Um, so, this is Right. And the view has been up there. I think I sent you a an email telling you when it was available. What's the biggest advantage of DC over AC? 
the biggest advantage we can extort. That's a big one. But in electronics, what's the big, what's the biggest advantage of DC over AC in electronics? So what does your TV operate off of? What is your D, what is your TV operate off? DC. What does your cell phone operate off of? DC. What is your stereos operate off of? DC. What is your microwave operate off of? DC. What's the big advantage of DC over AC? So do you store electricity inside your TV? It can be electronically controlled. We cannot electronically control AC. We can take AC and convert it to DC, and then we can recreate AC at whatever frequency and whatever amplitude we want. So we can electronically control it. So your stereo is doing that. You don't put DC on your on your speakers. You put AC on your speakers. So what is your stereo doing? It's taking DC, I mean, and converting it into a plus and minus AC to send out to your speakers. I mean, a plus and minus DC to convert to AC. Or we can electronic control it. But being able to store it is a really big advantage too, guys. So it's a big one, but we're talking about electronics in this class, right? Solid state. You manage to meet what we can do with that thing. Okay. So we all want to work on another one. Okay, which one? Let's see if let me see if my uh, <laughs> Okay. So it's want me to stop my base guys. So this is a what? A full wave or half wave? Yeah. So we're primary going back to some type of AC source somewhere. It could actually be a could actually be a, another transformer, right? And then we have a secondary. And then we come over, is it a positive or negative supply? Negative supply. Okay, so that means you can't really go into the right? And then what load do we have on this one? Okay. Yeah, so all these ones do. Yeah. And what's the ratio of the transformer? Five to one. So I mean, for every five turns on the primary, we have one turn on the secondary, so this guy's going to step it down. Uh, so V secondary would equal to what? Oh, what's the voltage over here? I'm sorry. Uh, would be equal to 120 divided by 5. What would that give us? 24 volts. Uh, v peak, the uh, secondary, would be equal to 24 divided by 0 0.707. What would that give us? What's that? A3.9. Uh, v peak out would be equal to 83.9 minus. Point seven. Point seven. Point seven reach. Yeah, uh thirty three point nine. Thirty three point nine. So which is right? That's right. Everybody got this? And V to be out would be equal to 33.9 minus 0.7. Would that give us? Uh, so my votes, DC would be equal to 33.2 divided by pi, 3.14, 10.6.
Yes. So I, my load would be equal to 10.6 divided by 1K, which would give me what? Milliamps. Yeah, my power in my load uh, would be equal to 10.6 milli divided by of time for it. No, wrong for me. I was going to use DT. Times 10.6 volts, right? Yeah, I got 10.6 milli times 10.6. What does that give me? So the power in my primary would be equal to what? Yeah, 112 milliwatts, good. So I, my primary, would be equal to 112 milli divided by 120 volts, which would give me a lot less. microamps if the transformer was 100 100 percent efficient so it'd probably be a little more but it's okay to be able to check your work right most of your transformers are at least 95 percent efficient some are actually at the 98 eight, 98 percent so guys everybody okay on that one Yes, no. Okay, I'm going to raise it. Uh, the next one is a lot of four-way bridge, right? Positive or negative supply? It's a DC power supply. It's got to be positive or negative. It's a DC power supply, it's got to be positive. So I'm looking on, on these, we're looking at the top, not the common. And we're looking to see what diodes point toward that. What diodes go toward the source, right? Understand. Pointing toward here. Okay, so that means this is a positive supply. So this is our common down here. This is our power up here. So here we have the common on the transfer itself. The common is set up on the outside of, on the other side of the diode. So this will be negative. Okay. Yes or no? And what's our load? Uh, what's the input over here? 120 volts still. What's the turns ratio? <sighs> so V is secondary. Would be equal to 120 divided by 12. Let's give us. Uh, VP secondary would be equal to 10 divided by 0.707. 
times 2, what does that give us? Wait a second. Sorry, wrong formula, guys. I'm trying to do something. Am I doing a good job? <laughs> That'd be 10 divided by 0 0.707. What does that give us? So V peak out will equal to fourteen point one four minus one point four. Why one point four this time? Goes through two diodes, right? What does that give me? What's that? My votes DC would be equal to 12.7 divided by 3.14 times 2, right? Huh? Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. Yep, so. De definitely Monday for this class, right? Okay. What does that give us? So the power in uh, the uh, I of the load would be equal to 8.1 divided by 3.3k. Power in the load would be equal to 8.1 times 2 milli. What we got? We're going to show it around the two, one, at least one decimal point, guys. So it'd be. So power uh, power in the primary is going to be equal to 6.2 milliwatts, right? And the primary will be equal to 16.2 milli divided by 120. Are we okay? So what size skews would I put over here in the primary? So this is a demo for a few. Huh? Yeah, it fuses, water fuses right in here. No, all fuses are rated in two. It, at least most electronic devices are rated in at least two things, right? And fuses is rated. And fuse is only rated in two things. Amps. Good. The other one is volts. How much voltage? Why don't we rate a fuse in volts? Because it's trying to open. It's trying to open up a push, right? You understand? And if you don't break that sucker, and when you break something, and you blow something, and you create a spark, it creates ozone. Ozone has a very low resistance. So 
So what happens when a fuse blows, it has a tendency to want to keep conducting through the ozone. So what they do is they rate the, the fuse and a voltage, a push that it's guaranteed to break. So it means it, 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 when it breaks, it separates far enough and fast enough that it won't arc, it won't create an arc over there. So fuses are rated in two, two things. So you can't take a 10 amp, 12 volt fuse for your car and use it in your house. Because your house, right, if it's 120 volts, if that thing blows, it might not blow, right? It'll melt the thing, but it might arc across. So we know here we'll probably have at least, uh, usually double it, probably around 200 volts, to a 40 volt fuse. Probably, but you have to get a standard size, right? You understand? So you just can't make them up. You can't have a standard size. What's that? God, dog. So that means I can get 160 amps into that secondary over there, and that fuse will pour that fuse and blow. Everything in my house will catch fire and burn up. That's what you yeah, and then you cry about all your wedding pictures that you lost, right? All right. I am. In fact, I'm I'm working on I, my my me and my wife have our fiftieth anniversary this year. Same person. <laughs> so so you would think uh you would think we would use it for uh what was our secondary current? Oh, I micro amp, guys. It was 135 micro. No, we're we're using we're using the secondary. I mean, I'm sorry, we're using the primary. What would y'all think we would use it as? It looks like we would come up here and we would use it if it's right here. But there's no such fuse. And plus, fuses are designed to handle short circuits. They're not ha they're not designed to handle the, the load. They're designed to see if you have a short circuit. So, uh, EC says uh, for under nine amps, and I'll show you that we're supposed to multiply this by two hundred fifty percent or two point five. That's what we choose. And then if we don't have a standard fuse, we would go up one, we go up to the next standard size. So that's something that's just nice enough. Secondary would be fused at 165% or 1.65. How they came up with that, I have no idea. So two and a half times what you would what what the full load current what the current would be, and that would be your full load current, whatever you uh, the maximum you're going to design your power supply around. But you can find this information on Okay, guys, that's the worksheet. So, like I said, there's going to be three of these on the test, not the same ones. So we're gonna have we're gonna have a full wave uh, center tap, we'll have a full wave a bridge, and we'll have a half wave rectifier. By the way, on on number two, we didn't do that. We should have uh, we should have put a minus on our voltage, right? Because it was a negative. Positive. How many of y'all caught that? <laughs> 